Hello, welcome to another Microsoft Flight Simulator video. I'm Roadkill, and today we are going to be flying the DHC-4 Caribou, which is the new local legend in Microsoft Marketplace. And uh, it's available for $14.99. So if you haven't got it, you might want to get it, and you might not want to get it after watching this video. So before we get started, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Also hit the notification bell keep up to date on all my latest videos be sure to leave a comment down below if you've purchased this plane and uh, what you like and don't like about it I'd love to hear from you with that all, all out of the way let's get to flying As you can see, this is a very detailed aircraft, and the textures and everything are awesome. It's just a beautiful plane, and, and honestly, I've been flying this in VR, and it looks totally amazing in VR. It's almost like you're in the real thing. Um, let's go inside here real quick. This is the cargo bay. Those cargo bay doors open up and uh it's pretty cool it's got a ramp that goes down and everything uh, this is a personnel carrier troop carrier it's been used in military uh and also humanitarian aid so it's uh hospital cargo troop transport you can open up those cargo bays in flight and let the the para jumpers jump out and uh yeah it's been used in firefighting too i believe as a jump plane so it's pretty versatile it can take off and land on short strips so you can take off so easily for the <clears throat> the weight of this thing it's amazing it's a it's a wonder actually <laughs> it, you, it's a good bush plane especially if you're trying to get cargo into uh, somewhere remote with a small small runway uh, let's see let's go into the cockpit here check it out you can tell it's very very detailed and all these most of the switches work I mean there are a few that don't but as you can see it's very very detailed you got the heater there in the back the pilot can switch the gas heater on if it starts icing up and then you've got the cargo bay entryway there and then these are the cargo bay door ramps that I'm not going to do today because it I mean I guess I could but it takes a while for them to open and shut but it's pretty cool it's a nice little feature they have there um I'm gonna start this thing and it's not the right way to do it but I'm gonna do it anyways because it's the only way I know how I'm not too sure on the correct procedures but I can get it started and that's what I'm going to do and we're going to take a flight through Glacier Park and uh, see how this thing handles in mountainous terrain. So we've got to shut that lock off so that we can get full throttle on this thing. So if you do have the airplane and you're having problems with throttle, that might be an issue. It's got that lock there. Let's get this out of the way and get this plane started. Um, see here, we've got all the lights, light controls there, radios, nav radios, GPS, no autopilot in this, so if that's something that bothers you, you might not want to look at getting this plane. Um, one of the things that I figured out is I was flying and all my electronics turned off like five minutes into the flight, and that's because I didn't have these two switches switched on, so... That's something to keep in mind. Uh, let's see here. Let's get this started. Get the battery going. The master start on. As I said, I don't know if this is the correct. 
I know this isn't the correct procedure, but this is how I got it started. So that's how I'm going to get it started for you. The left engine going. It's rumbling away, so turn off this primer here. Now, one of the things that I couldn't figure out is airspeed. Uh, where's my airspeed? And this is an airspeed uh, dial here, and then this is airspeed as well. And from what I've learned from other videos is if you're light, uh, you don't have a lot of cargo, this is what speed you want to be going to approach and if you're heavy this is the speed you want for approach i don't understand it, it kind of shows you right here 26,000 pounds for the diamond and then 28.5 for the arrow so you want that needle about there for approach on landings from what i learned and uh, we got de-icing here and fuel boosters what else do we and a bunch of stuff. This is all the lights, so we have, uh, probably get those on, huh? We didn't turn them on. But you can turn them to dim or bright. We've got tail and wing, emergency lights, wing inspect lights, which work. Um, yeah, so I think we're good to go. So I think we're gonna take off into Glacier Park. So that is what we're gonna do. I should fuel up, fuel up real quick, because I'm not sure how much fuel we're going to use, because I'm just flying by the seat of my pants, and uh, guessing as we go. Okay, so we are going to take off here. I forgot to mention that the flap controls are up here, and then landing lights are there, taxi lights are there. We're gonna taxi on out this side of the runway. Oops. Let's get into the seated position here. The brakes work phenomenal on this thing and it's very, uh, very responsive on turning. And just a really fun, fun plane to fly. In fact, I was flying it the first time and I do like a GPS so I can do long flights, but I did a couple flights, like my first flight I'm thinking, man, this is, I don't know if I like this aircraft. I love the detail and how old school it is. It really is immersive, but I wish it had autopilot. And I wasn't sure if I liked it because it is, it's like flying a bus. It, you can feel the weight if you take a, a turn, you can feel the weight of the wings, so you have to really yank it to the left or right, and uh, it takes a while to turn. So I wasn't sure if I liked that either, but after flying it a while, and you'll see once we get up in the air, it seems like it's going super slow, but when you're going 173 knots, which is not slow, uh, it seems like you're going 60, so it, it's really... A strange thing uh, to experience but I after flying it stick and rudder uh, I took it from here to Libby Montana through some live weather and it was so much fun I enjoyed the heck out of it one of the downfalls is, is it's just got that small GPS unit down there without a very big display so that might be an issue for some of you. Luckily for me, I I have a, I mean, you could do the in-game map, help navigate if that's something you want to do. And that's what I do on a second monitor is I have a, a, a different GPS on my second monitor screen so I can navigate navigate visually that way so it makes it more enjoyable for me. I didn't program this thing here. I guess I could have, just so you can see. It's right here, is that it? It's right here, there it is, okay. 
So that's a, that's your screen there. You don't have very good visibility on that unless you're looking down. So we'll get this thing started here. This thing rolling. On takeoff. And on really short runways, you can set your flaps to 20% and it'll take off on a very short runway. Just great. It makes it a lot of fun because you can land in so many cool different places and you don't even have to have a runway. You can land on grass, so it's a really good bush plane. And you'll see here, once we get into the mountains, why I think they released this for the New Zealand uh, update, because when you get in the mountains, you see the glass top here, it, you've got such a great view. It is truly an amazing airplane if you want to do some sightseeing and do some cool landings. Lots of good visibility. All right, we are up in the air and gonna get the uh, mixture down here a little. I can do it without crashing. Go to auto rich. I get it on auto. Sorry, I'm so used to flying in VR that yeah I do okay I'm having a hard time using the hat switches to look around so now that we're up in the air and probably take the landing lights and turn them off I can do it without crashing where are they at oh So weird doing this with the hat switch, sorry. Okay. One thing I have to say is the head position is super low. <laughs> it's like that's the head position that it comes with. So you you have to adjust the cameras, um, which I haven't done yet, so I'm just using the hat switch to get me to where I need to go. But the top speed on this thing is 215 knots and it stalls out at 68 knots so you can get super slow before you land which makes it easy to land on those short runways we're just gonna fly fly through uh, Columbia Falls here down below me through these mountains and uh, up into Glacier Park Like I said, it it's really heavy to turn. You can feel the weight, which is which is good. I mean, it feels realistic, like you're flying something with some bulk. And the thing that surprises me is the climb rate that this thing has, because it feels like you're going to stall out, but it keeps climbing. So you can climb up steep slopes, which which I'll demonstrate here once we get into Glacier Park. And you can keep climbing, and it makes it a lot of fun to fly in mountainous areas. And the sounds are just super cool. You can hear the uh, propellers uh, the difference in both propellers. So if you make a turn, you can hear one propeller slapping the wind a different way than the other one. And you hear that? That's what it does. It's just very immersive, great sounds. And a lot of fun to fly low level. Skimming the ground because it's slow. It seems slow. It's going fast, but it seems it seems slow. 
but it really isn't. going to fly up over over these ridges here and into Glacier Park over McDonald Lake and up McDonald Creek into into the park and then uh, I was planning on flying over Logan's Pass and down into the canyons down below that way and then just doing a little random flight so I'm definitely thinking this is a fun cruising plane and I'm probably going to fly it a lot and have a lot of fun with this aircraft trying to land in weird weird locations if you're just flying in a straight line though it can be kind of it seems like for me it seems kind of boring so I like to do these low level flights where you're hugging the train and just checking out the scenery down below and up above especially like with this airplane, like I said, the glass on top gives you a view that you don't have in other aircraft. So super fun to fly low level. Like any of these patches of ground here, you can, I would say you could probably land on without any problems, as long as it's level. And even if it's not level, I landed on this spot the other day on top of a mountain and it had a big bump in the middle of it and I thought I was going to wreck it but I went over the bump <laughs> I went over the bump and down the bump and still made a good landing so this thing is durable to say the least it's really I tried to get it to go over speed on a dive and there's only one time that I got it close to overspeed and it leveled off easily so it doesn't when you do a nose dive it's easy to get out of it and uh, not kill yourself All right now we're over Lake McDonald which looks frozen over so that's why uh, we have this big white swath of ground or water underneath of us it's not a field it's a lake <clears throat> and if you uh, have ever been to Glacier Park you know what I'm talking about because this is the lake you drive by on the way up there from the Montana side but the detail in this cockpit as you can tell is just beautiful it even has a checklist here for you to look at and a bunch of information up here for operating speeds which is nice to have and also one of the things I forgot about was this here this has a digital readout for your airspeed and you have to turn it up really bright so you can see it so as you can see we're going about 115 53 knots there but uh, that is there and then you have your airspeed here which I don't know how to read and here so I'm going fast, it says. Going fast. Which is good. I like going fast. As long as my wings aren't ripping off. And we're going to need some speed to 
climb up some of these ravines and canyons here in Glacier Park. It may look like we're flying level, but we're not. We're flying uphill. <clears throat> You can see so much out of this aircraft that it's it's awesome. So much fun flying flying like this as well. Skimming things. Although it can bite you in the ass. You're flying too low and you lose airspeed. You go crashing into the ground. Especially when you're flying uphill like we are. So you gotta keep an eye on your airspeed. So if you see that line on the hills up there, about three, eight, three quarters up, that is the going to the Sun Highway in Glacier Park. See, isn't that a great view? You could just see all around you, up above you, flying in this thing. It, it helps with navigation too, especially if you're turning in to an approach or something, you you have a, a very good field of view in this. So we're gonna take a ride up here and try to fly over um, Logan's Pass. If I don't stall out, there's this is the tricky part here. And being I'm not in VR, I'm having a little hard time reading my airspeed so hopefully I can make it up here start climbing a bit that gray line there on the hillside is the going to the sun highway even though it looks like I don't know it doesn't look like a road Definitely doesn't look like a road. All right, I gotta pay attention here because we need to climb. Climb up over this this hill here. Oh no. I don't know if we're gonna make it. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna make it. Instead of doing what I did last time, I'm gonna gain my altitude here and then get up over the lip that we need to get up over in order to fly over Logan's Pass and Logan's Visitor Center. That is the plan. I just need to make sure I keep an eye on airspeed, which is right here and right here. Unfortunately, they don't have a, I mean, this is the airspeed too, and I don't know how to read that. So I got to look at this little digital readout here. It looks like 134 knots that we're flying. I think we're good now. I think I'll be able to make it over. As long as I don't get distracted with the view. I'm gonna have to start pulling up here. Just wanna make sure I have enough altitude to get over the lip here. And I think I'm gonna be good this time around. Right to the right of us there, Sacagawea Falls. Fortunately, waterfalls don't really show up in this game. 
All right, I'm gonna start nosing down so I can get some speed to get up over this. Hopefully, we can do it. I think we got her this time. I think we got her. Down below, going to the Sun Road, and to the left will be Logan's Visitor Center. Right there. I'm gonna fly over the top of it. All right, welcome to Glacier Park. So this thing is so versatile in mountainous areas. It's just a lot of fun to fly around and it's really hard to go over speed. So you can do some crazy, crazy flying. Crazy flying in the mountains. Yeah, you can get into some hairy, hairy situations up here in the mountains flying like I am. Especially if you turn down some of these canyons. I've done that a few times and, and had not enough airspeed to turn back around and crashed into the side of the mountain. But it's an adventure. You can see great views out of the cockpit here. Definitely an awesome airplane to go sightseeing. I'm definitely going to take this flying in New Zealand. Isn't that awesome? Such great views. Yeah, this is vastly uh, becoming one of my favorite aircraft to fly. Maybe not on long journeys since it doesn't have an autopilot, but if I learn the VOR and radio navigation, I might actually, might actually take this on longer flights. Side look here real quick. if we can find a place to land here throw some laps down I think we see a nice piece of land to land at down there so I think we'll hit those here I'll slow us down a bit pull our flaps to where they're at throttle up and come back around One of the things that makes it hard is all the white snow. It kind of makes it hard to see things clearly. It's easier to differentiate between uh, flat land when there's no snow covering it. As you can see, this sunroof here makes it super easy to see where you're turning so that you can get a decent approach. And we're gonna see if we can land here. No promises. If we crash, I'll leave it in the video and 
call it good, but you get the flaps full throttle or full down just to show you how easy it is to slow this thing down. I almost might be going too slow here. Try to land over here on the left hand side. Although there's a little patch of trees there that we might hit. Here goes nothing. This might be too short of a runway, but uh, we're going to give it a shot. Might be a rough landing, but yeah, that was a rough landing brakes yep so uh, <laughs> uh I should have tried that but uh, I did I was trying to show off how great of a landing this thing can do what did I do I crash landed so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and actually perform a decent landing so that you can see <laughs> How well it actually lands when you don't have an idiot in the cockpit so uh, I'll be right back okay since I crashed and ruined the demonstration on landing on a short runway I figured I'd find a short runway here near Glacier Park uh, to take off from and land at as well at least that's what the plan is but uh, I want to show you how versatile this thing is and how it's an awesome bushcraft whoops for how big it is so I'm gonna set my flaps to 20 and get some throttle up here to get enough boom behind it so that we can take off from this very short runway here on the outskirts of Glacier Park And then I'm going to come back around, or try to come back around, and uh, land it. So as you can see, we just took off from a very short runway for such a big plane, which is awesome. So if you've been looking for a big plane that you can land, in weird locations this is it fly around this way come back around and try to land it I have to say I am thoroughly enjoying this aircraft it's a lot of fun to fly um, yeah for 50 or for 15 bucks 14.99 it's well worth the money I think especially if you want something different to fly that's versatile that can do a lot of different landing strips this can do almost all of them and even where there aren't any landing strips so it's definitely cool unique and I'm glad I got it now I just got to show you that it can land on a small strip without crashing As you can tell, I changed the weather to clear skies so I could see better and you could see better and different, differentiate between land and water just to give it a little uh, scenery.
trying to find the runway. I think it's over this way. I think I'm going to have to cut it hard here. Up here. Yeah, there it is. That's the cool thing about this plane is that I can't get over the skylight. It just helps out so much. kind of a strange approach because you gotta hug these mountains to get into line up. I'm probably coming in from the wrong angle, but why not live life on the edge? And try to make things a little more interesting. And if I land, I'll uh, have to show you how cool the flaps are on this thing because it's definitely unique. It's like half the wing folds down. It reminds me of something off of, uh, Halo. All right, so I'm going to give us some flaps now and drop, drop some power because I am hauling the mail. just want to get enough speed to get up over this ridge here. I'm at 35 laps and I have one more notch to go. Got our throttle down to idle pretty much. I throw the gear down. Yeah, I'm thinking this is the wrong, wrong way to come into this air, airport, but why not? Why not? All right, full flaps now. I'm gonna cut the power like, I'm just gonna drift in here. And hopefully not crash. Come on, baby. Baby. All right. Here goes nothing. Well, that wasn't bad at all, was it? One little bounce, two little bounces. Hit the brakes. And look at that. We made it on a short little runway in this beast of an airplane. That's so. I'm not talking about my pilot piloting skills, but it's so impressive as a uh, engineering feat. Look at that. We still had runway left, but check out these flaps. They're awesome. It's so cool. Like half the wing folds over. That's why it can land on such short short strips it's like an air brake there all right well since I didn't do a perfect flight I wanted to show you show you the capabilities of this thing and how awesome of an aircraft this is like I said it was only $14.99 and for the detail and craftsmanship that went into creating this aircraft and just its versatility even without an autopilot, I would highly recommend this plane for something that's very fun to fly anywhere in the world. So uh, go out and get it. But uh, yeah, I sound like a, a salesman or something, but <laughs> I'm not. I'm just telling you, this plane is awesome. Uh, I hope you all had a uh, good flight with me, even though we crashed and died a couple times. Um, it was a lot of fun doing. I hope you have a great week or weekend, whatever is ahead of you. Stay safe and Godspeed.